Hi, Year 10, Mr. Tapley here for your next lesson of Year 10, How to Get Away with Murder. And this lesson, I'm going to try and keep the video a bit shorter. I'm not going to go through all the admin stuff that we went over yesterday about uh, remote learning and using all the technologies. Um, it's still the same, so you can still get a Compass uh, lesson plan for the information, Google Classroom, Compass resources, etc., etc. Um, but I'm just going to go through the class slides, explain the lesson activity, and hopefully you'll have the rest of the lesson to complete the lesson activities so you don't have any classwork turning into homework. So our learning intention today is to develop our understanding of the Nuremberg Laws and their purpose and use under the Nazi regime. So Hitler used a lot of tools, a lot of weapons in his uh, quest for power, in his, um, I guess, path to genocide, to the Holocaust. And one of the legal tools that he used was these Nuremberg Laws. Success criteria today is to outline the origins, the details, and the aim of the Nuremberg Laws, and to reflect on how the Nazi regime used the Nuremberg Laws as a tool of control and terror in the lead up to the Holocaust. So to embed Nazism ideology, so this idea of Aryan supremacy, so you know, pure Germans versus the rest, and social Darwinism, so the idea that some humans, namely Jews, are less evolved than these Aryan, these pure Germans, to put that idea, that way of thinking, that belief of the Nazi party into law, so to make it real and legal and you know, binding, the Nazis created a series of laws which were designed to restrict Jewish people in basically three ways. So physically restrict them, economically restrict them, so their wallet hit them where it hurts, and then also restrict their social, their civil rights, basically. So physically, these laws were able to restrict the Jewish people by physically moving them, by putting them into these ghettos, to these very, very poor quality housing communities. And what that did was physically segregate the Jewish people, isolate them from the German population. So when the Jews are mistreated and abused later on, it's easier for the German public to accept this because it's not happening in front of them, it's happening all the way over there. I can hear the screams, but I can't see what's happening, so I'm just going to ignore it, pretend it's not happening, go Hitler. No one take that quote out of context. <laughs> um, economic restrictions. So Jewish people were banned from owning businesses, a lot of people were kicked out of their jobs, and there were employment restrictions on hiring practices for hiring Jewish people and for Jewish people to hire other people. Uh, social restrictions, so really attacking them as people removing German citizenship from the Jewish people, so they were no longer considered Germans. They were no longer considered German residents, uh, which meant that they had a lot of civil and political rights removed. So they were basically half people. They were half citizens living in their own country that they may have lived in for, you know, generations. There may have been people who didn't even realize they were Jewish. You know, they might have been one quarter or one eighth Jewish, and then everything was taken away from them. They might not be practicing Judaism, you know, they might not be actively religious, but it was still taken away from them. Um, and they also banned uh, interfaith relationships. So you could not be in a relationship, you could not marry uh, a German if you were Jewish. Quick little video there, I believe that one's only one, two minutes long. 140, 140. Um, quick little video there explaining the Nuremberg Laws. And it also goes through this little interactive timeline that shows you the events leading up to and then leading after the Nuremberg Laws. So nice uh, context there from that video. Cool. Move my giant face. Go away. Go away, Mr. Turkley. There we go. <laughs> so the Nuremberg Laws. Know your enemy. Uh, the Nazi regime created further restrictions and regulations in the months after the Nuremberg Laws were created. So this was the first step towards something bigger. Forbidding Jews from working for the government and for voting. So taking away those civil, those political rights. And what that did was effectively remove any opposition from Jewish people. You know, you can't challenge these anti-Semitic policies if you cannot vote on them. <laughs> so it's like, does anyone have any opinions about this uh, law against Jewish people? except Jewish people can't vote on that law and they can't get into government to create change. So it's effectively removing any resistance. The laws also aimed to discriminate against Jewish people and importantly, create a visible target for Nazi aggression. Because if you're walking down the street, you don't know if someone is Jewish unless Hitler puts a bright gold star on your chest, on your clothing that says, I am Jewish. 
So a legal definition of Jewish was created to identify people. Um, Jews were forced to wear a yellow Star of David, which is a symbol of the Jewish faith. So very demeaning to have to wear that and use that, have that symbol turned against you and used as like a negative connotation. And then even their passports were marked with a little red J, as you can see there. And what these new restrictions did were uh, create challenges for Jewish people in avoiding discrimination and harassment at home. So you're creating a visible target, a visible enemy for anyone to discriminate against in Germany. And also that red J there makes it very difficult for you to uh, complete international travel. So you can't leave the country because you're going to get to the border, present your passport, and they'll say, oh, Jewish, eh? And then it will go poorly for you. Like me working the sides. There we go. <laughs> Why are the Nuremberg Laws significant? Well, the Nuremberg Laws essentially removed Jewish people from German society. So they're no longer participating as people in this society. They are no longer equal citizens of the nation. They are beneath us. They are below us. And that's set in law. It's not like someone's opinion. It is legally you know, enforced by the courts, by the government. You are no longer part of this country. The laws also set the foundation for future discriminatory laws and restrictions. Again, it was the first law for a set of laws that set on a path towards genocide. The Nuremberg Laws may have only specifically mentioned Jews. However, the Nazi regime soon applied these same restrictions to other minorities, so black people, uh, gypsies, uh, nomads, um, other ethnic and religious minorities were soon treated the same way as the Jewish people were under these laws. In World War II, nations allied with Germany enacted their own version of the Nuremberg Laws, which led to increased anti-Semitism and violence against Jews across the entire continent and across all of Europe. So people were uh, imprisoned, were harassed, were injured, were killed in other places of the world as a result of these laws coming in in Germany. This development further legitimized and legalized anti-Semitism and dehumanized the Jewish people, which would have implications for future atrocities. That's a you know play by play you know game plan. You know it's page one of the playbook in how to get away with murder is to make your um, target to make your your victims seem less human because you can get away with treating non-humans poorly you know we do it to animals every day you know mrs happily went and got maccas for lunch i don't want to think about what happened to that chicken uh before it was a nugget but you can't treat people that way <laughs> so what you will do if you are trying to get away with murder if you're trying to you know commit a genocide is you will slowly and gradually dehumanize your enemy so that it's less shocking when you treat them so very poorly. Now, what we're going to be doing today is doing a little writing task, which I'm sure you're all very excited about, <laughs> but it does need to occur at some point during the curriculum. You know, we need to practice our writing so that when you get into the assessments, you know what you're doing, you know, you practice it. It's the only way you can get better. And again, the good thing about doing these humanities electives is that you're getting help for your English subjects. You know, it's very applicable, very similar transferable skills you have in English which you have to do in VCE, <laughs> um, and humanities. So hopefully we're helping you improve your English score when you guys sit your exams at the end of the year. Do you have exams for your 10 English? I should know that. I don't know that. Anyway, so to develop your writing skills and demonstrate your understanding of this topic, you'll be creating just a single paragraph, just one argument paragraph. I know it's remote learning. I don't want to throw you guys into an entire essay. So it's just one argument paragraph, 50 minutes. I believe you can do it. And your argument paragraph is responding to the following statement. The Nuremberg Laws dehumanized the Jews, which differentiated them and separated them from the German people, from the rest of the country. Now, in your physical or digital notebook, again, if you're doing it in your physical notebook, I'll check it on Thursday during a double. In your digital notebook, I can check in Google Classroom. Wherever you're writing it or typing it, you need to record one Teal argument paragraph. So we've used this stuff before in English and Humanities. Teal, it's just how you structure your writing, uh, just making it super easy for you guys. And I've got teal support on this next page here. So you've basically got one sentence for the topic sentence. So clearly stating the topic of your argument and your opinion. So that's your topic there. So the Nuremberg Laws dehumanize Jews. So your first sentence is probably going to say something like, the Nuremberg Laws dehumanize Jews through blank. So you give me an example. 
using the information from the class slides and the support resources below. So I've got a couple of websites there to help you write up your paragraph. So this one's the Holocaust Encyclopedia. So there's lots of information there to help you out. That's where you're going to get your evidence and your explain uh, research. More information on Britannica. Nice picture there. But you're using the class slides, you're using those resources. Oh, my picture's gone away. Well, I've probably done you a favor <laughs> to create just one argument paragraph using that teal structure. So again, one sentence, topic sentence. So clearly state your topic, your opinion. So the Nuremberg laws uh, dehumanize Jews by doing the following things, play it. And then explain. So you explain how they uh, dehumanize the Jews, the Nazis did this. So what do you mean? How does this connect to the topic? Evidence, that's where you start smashing in some examples, some quotes, some key dates. So you can include something about the Star of David or the passports, how that's dehumanizing them, making them, treating them differently than other Germans. You could find some dates off those websites. Then L, link, that's just your final sentence where you link back to the essay topic. So in conclusion, all this crap meant that the Jews were treated differently, they were dehumanized, blah, 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 blah. Just a fun little graphic there to show you what teal is all about. But really, if you want a mathematical formula for this, your topic sentence is a sentence. That's one sentence. Your explain is probably going to be two to three sentences. Your evidence, two to three sentences. Your link, one sentence. So you're looking at somewhere between, I'm not a math teacher, but like eight to 10 sentences. So it's not going to be absolutely massive. I'd rather, much rather you write something quality and short than long and boring and rambling and not really getting the point across. So take your time with this because you have the whole lesson. I'll give you some feedback on Thursday when I see you uh, on site, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. And if you have any questions or concerns about this little writing task, again, please let me know. But hopefully the class slides and all those websites there will help you to answer that question there. Um, but yeah, hope you guys are well. Hope you're surviving and thriving in remote learning. And uh, yeah, best of luck. Cheers.